Come on, we're ready. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> so, uh, all right. All right. We have our quorum, so uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, first item is the uh, adoption of the agenda as presented to us. Motion to adopt. Second. All in favor? All right. Uh, what is your daughters or son and daughter? Yes, yeah, so my two daughters, <laughs> Maya and my little one, and Emery. <laughs> Do you think they'd like to say something to us? You know, you guys are the public at the meeting. You can tell us anything you want. No, we're good. Okay. <laughs> They both go to camps, right? They do, yeah. yeah. Sure. Do you like summer camp? Okay, good call. <laughs> All right, we're good then. We'll add that to the minutes. Can I make a comment a little bit of public? Sure. Um, so I was watching um, the board meeting the other night on the YouTube channel. It's a little hard to hear. Okay. I don't know if you got that feedback. I don't know if there's a way to adjust the volume at all, but... Uh, we can look and try and take a look. Uh, this is the only one that we have. It's just that kind of setup, and the setup doesn't really allow well for multiple things, but it can be hard to hear, especially if there's a lot of other noise or something gets going in the room or something. I think there was only one of the commissioners talking. It was nobody else was talking, but I was like just straining to hear it. Okay. it was, yeah, I don't know if you can adjust that. Uh, we will see what we can do. Where is the microphone? I mean, it's right up here. Yeah. Oh, that's it. There. If yeah. we could move it there. Uh, yeah, and we have thought about that too. Uh, we did a bunch of tests when we first started playing with all this. And it made it hard to hear the people in the audience. So we tried to get it in that center so that way you could hear the public comment clearly as well as this stuff clearly. But some people, you and Jeff, have, you know, kind of projecting voices. Leah can be very, uh, I imagine it was probably Leah that you were trying to hear um, because she has such a quiet voice. Um, so we'll, let me see what we can do. Thanks, Sean. Okay, uh, item number three, the draft minutes of our November 26th commission meeting. That was a long time ago. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, this is an item for us to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Mm -hmm. Item number four, the draft minutes of the January 14th board meeting. This is an item to review. I guess I would just ask one question that I have. Is uh, it suggested from the public that the Park and Rec Commission and the Fire Commission meet less frequently? Um, reason behind that? Uh, that was Linda's uh, suggestion, and I think it was geared a little bit more towards wondering if that might help uh, recruit. Recruitment efforts, like if there were, and I know that this commission, I believe, had actually talked about potentially meeting uh, every other month and decided not to um, for various reasons that I didn't necessarily disagree with. Um, I think she was just thinking that if it would help with recruitment to get more commissioners on, if they said, okay, it's only every other month instead of every month, or uh, just help with more regular attendance. And, I, I, and that's how I kind of remembered that comment. She was looking at it both, just trying to come up with the, a lot of it was also in the, uh, because one of the matters on the agenda was also talking about the public outreach and everything else too. Okay. So, I was just curious. Yeah, that's all. That's that's what that's why that one came from. And that was I think Shane had made that recommendation as well, didn't he, Shane Valentine? It could have been Shane. I don't remember. It was a it was quite a little while ago, and I remember some of the uh, concerns about it was. You know, if you only meet every other month, and then if you miss a meeting, right. then all of a sudden you're four months removed from the last time you were at a meeting. Um, and so I don't remember who exactly brought it up, but I remember that it, 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 after a conversation, it never even, I don't even think, took a motion. Yeah. It right, just, it's just the three of us, it's just too hard to do, because like you say, if one of us can't come, and right. then we skipped the month, and mm -hmm. half the year's over before we're back at 
Right. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Any other comments on the uh, board of directors meeting? Okay. Uh, I have the next item, um, item number five, determine location topic for timing of upcoming facility and program area staff presentations to the commission. This is an item for discussion. Um, Mr. Fretwell included a memo in our packet. Any comments from the commission? I just had one question. Um, uh, what was, uh, what, uh, what, why did you choose this order? Um, yeah, so that was, uh, I followed the, in terms of the timeline um, outlining the, the mature to shift to these months when uh, things are a little less busy in our schedule, so starting February the next month after this discussion. And then as far as the uh, order of the parks, um, sort of kept it similar to what we had before because from a staff perspective that I you know that seemed to be working well for us and um, didn't have any real reason to make a specific change um, unless it came up tonight in discussion that would, that would alter that. So. Okay. Yeah, just my own thought was just having the pool in the community center towards the end that gives you enough time to implement any changes before you get super busy with the summer months. So just thinking about, you know, if you have ideas about what workload might be like for each of these four areas and planning them, you know, so what would be most helpful to you? Um, yeah, and there was actually a little bit of, uh, as, far as, as far as the pool goes, um, looking at the pool when the season is in progress as opposed to when it's sitting dormant and things are piled up and in storage it's not representative at, at this time so in april um it would be sort of representative what you know what operations actually look like which may be more helpful for yeah. commission discussion i just add that the the one time that we did a presentation i thought it was really helpful and i thought there was good conversation I, but it was a long time ago. I don't remember. Did you have? Did you have slides or? Yeah. So it was a PowerPoint that um, basically just addressed. Here's um, sort of where we're at on this. Um, here's a little bit of background on this facility. Um, some of the maintenance challenges and some of the direction we plan on going in the future. It's sort of like yeah, uh, like with a few pictures. So. No, it was a good format. I mean, I don't remember the details. But I remember it working and thinking that was really helpful. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so it's a good it's a good template that I could use for the other facilities yeah. as well. It'd be pretty easy to ad adapt. Wasn't it on the panhandle that you? Your yeah, the, in the oh, main, right in the main part. Right. I, I guess the other issue is that are we physically doing walking inspections or are we just looking to still change? Um, the bylaws that we can then do, you know, I think that was our desire previously to the board of directors that we could do, we had an alternative, we could do presentations as opposed to actually physically walking the areas and Bill, the reason behind that was because we had trouble maintaining order in, in that situation. Well, there was a, a format that just did not lend itself to having public discussion at a given time. Uh, it, it seemed to just, you know, we were, we were kind of all over the page. We're looking at this, we're moving at this, we're talking about that, then we move and we settle on something else here and there. And it's just... Uh, well, my memories of that is doing the walk, walk alongs and everyone's discussing things as you're walking along. Right. People are putting up ideas and people are poo-pooing ideas as they came up from certain people. And it was it was an odd thing because it, it only takes a minute for Creekside Park to walk through. The main park, I mean, if you start down at the mini park and then walk up the panhandle and across, you're talking quite a five, ten minutes. For a amount of time, yeah. yeah. Um, do we as a commission still want to try to put together, um, say maybe reword our proposed amendment and submit it back to the board? Or do we just want to 
fall back to the old way of walking the grounds at, at those particular at those particular meetings? I I like. I liked the presentation. I actually thought it was much more beneficial, and I thought there was much better discussion. So I, I, I would agree. I would like to continue, or at least we've only, I think we've only done that once, right? I think I'd like to try and do that with a few more, and then as we have these presentations, there may be things that we decide. Oh, we should go out on site and take a look at that, and maybe something could be developed out of that conversation if we feel like it's necessary or I mean we all live close we could just go out there on our own too and take a look at it and then come back and discuss. Um, I yeah I don't I'm not at this point I'm not interested in trying to do the field visit again. I, I think I mentioned in the past in my day job we we have had at Marine County Parks we have had public meetings in the on site and it's very clearly articulated. This is a public meeting. The public's allowed to speak at this point and only this point. This is not a dialogue, and it works. But that has not worked here. So I, I'm not interested in that at this point. But I, I don't know if it's necessary. If it's Eric, I guess, do you feel it's necessary that we change the bylaws? Well, I was trying to look at finding the language. I actually was thinking exactly what you were thinking as I was listening to some of this conversation of as Luke goes through the presentations, which we're going to do February, March, April, May, which also, you know, keeping in mind that these locations that he set up were simply suggestions based on how tours, what areas we used to tour, so that's up. But I was thinking exactly what you said in that if through these presentations you say, okay, let's take a, a summer month meeting and go do to one of these sites because I want to see firsthand more about this or that. Then that can easily be arranged. So uh, I was trying to find that where... actually makes a lot of sense, though. Right. Well, and I, you know, to your point, John, I'm not on the commission, and I sit in a different seat, but I was on the commission. I thought the presentation that Luke gave and the conversation that ensued with that presentation was much more rich than anything that comes out of being actually on those sites and doing the walkthroughs. Because to, uh, for every point you just made, not to mention it just is more conducive to having those types of uh, in-depth conversations and Q&A sessions that, you know, you're also kind of, when you do those walkthroughs, you're racing time to some degree, and then you also know that you've got this agenda following up that you're gonna try to conduct an actual meeting meeting after that walkthrough too. Um, so I, I, I don't disagree with a single thing that you just said. I was just trying to find... Um, you said, you know, when, when we previously went to the board, I think we recommended a permanent change to the bylaws. Is there a way to make a recommendation to the board that we try this for the next six months? And see how like, it's just do it more as a temporary thing, do it for this year, um, or for the next six months, and let it, let it you know, prove yeah, itself I don't know. to be beneficial? You know? Or, or do we even have to specify? Yeah. I, I, don't, I, know, I don't know. And when we, yeah, I know, we, but I do know that we went forward with a permanent recommendation. Right. So right. maybe if it's it's temporary or. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that, and I'm trying. I'm having a hard time finding in the bylaws where it specifically stated that the commission will go out and uh, look at the. Oh, well, that that would be Article Three, Number Seven, Commissioner's oh, okay. Responsibility. Oh, so you, you got the old one there. Good. Thank you. Inspect park and recreation department facilities annually during summer months and develop a list of recommended improvements. Okay, now, to that point, that doesn't necessarily say you're going to go to... I, I think there's some ambiguity with that statement as well. It doesn't mean that every single meeting of throughout the summer months, I think it is... I think, I think that the commission has the right to decide within that what do those inspections mean? And those inspections might be physical inspections, they might be follow-up from these presentations that Luke will give here in the spring. Uh, it doesn't say inspect every single facility and go to every park and do all of this. That just was practice of what we did. So I think through these inspections you can decide, or through these things, I, I don't know that you full-on need to do a bylaws amendment at this point in time. I, I think you'll live up to that spirit of what that sentence is. Um, 
You know, and I think the commission needs to be given my personal opinion. I'm not the board. Bill can speak to this, but my personal opinion is I think you guys need to be given a little bit of leeway considering that, you know, you're willing to volunteer your time and you're coming in and this is what you feel is best. And uh, to John's point, if he has no interest in going on a tour, he's simply not going to go to that meeting, at which point now you only have two commissioners and you're just not going to have a meeting. Well, so I, don't, I, just, I don't think the board's going to come down for lack of a better term, on the commission, so you're not doing this. You know, I just, I don't see that happening. I think the board is very grateful. And again, I'm not the spokesperson of the board, but I think the board is very grateful and appreci appreciative that there are people who are willing to sit on and serve serve in this, serve on this commission and in this capacity. Well, it, my recollection from reviewing the board meeting regarding this was that they wanted, they, they wanted our eyes you know, that more sets of eyes out there would identify more issues and, I, I, I mean, because the proposed language was just to conduct physical inspections of and or receive staff reports, so he just kind of gave us the option of, we're going to do, we're going to look at it both ways. Right. And, and that was not acceptable to them, so. Yeah, I'd have to kind of go back. I, I Personally, I remember that I wasn't in complete agreement with the board on that, but I answered to the board, and that was just where they went. And I didn't fully understand their rationale behind it. I know that the you know afterward, in talking to some of the board members, I think they felt that it would have been beneficial if there could have been some commission members there to kind of state their case. And I obviously didn't do a very good job of translating what the why this request was being made, because I don't... There was no part of me that thought the commission was just trying to get out of doing something or that this presented less of a level of oversight. I thought this gave the commission more options on ways to learn and make sure that the district and staff are, are doing what we should be doing and that the parks and everything are being maintained in the way that they should be maintained and used in the way that they should be used. Um, so I saw it as a, as a tool even greater than just going out to sites. What do we think about uh, having some language in there around I mean, if the commissioners go and do the walkthrough prior to the meeting, and then we have a presentation. So it's not a public meeting out in the park. It's not a public meeting. You know, the, that, that happens here. But we commit to going out and having a look at the site before we come to that meeting. And I don't know how everyone feels about that. It's an additional request on folks' time. Um, but it's also pretty quick to do. Most of us are live in the area, so mm -hmm. pop by and just have a look around and then come in, get a presentation, and put together the list of items. Well, that, that certainly seems like an option to kind of circumvent the, um, you know, allow us to look at it in multiple different perspectives and still meet bylaws because I don't think, that, I mean, you know, we, we do a physical inspection on our own, so we're kind of beating the edge of it, but... Uh, it doesn't say, it doesn't specifically state that the commission will hold meetings at these sites. Right. Or will tour these sites as a commission. Right. It says, commissioner shall inspect park and recreation department facilities annually during summer months and develop a list of recommended improvements. At which point, to Ann's point, is, is you're going out doing that, you can easily jot down some notes. Right give them to staff and we can compile those into more, okay, so here's some thoughts from John when he went to the playground, and here's Ann's thoughts from when he went to the play, just playground. Just discuss them during the presentation. Yeah, or discuss, yeah, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the other side of that coin is that we didn't really try to incorporate language into our amendment that referred to trying to maintain civility in our discussions and meetings and time spent out there because, I mean, there were, there were times out there when things were totally out of hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, you know, totally yeah. out of hand. Well, this and is what I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> this yes. is what I would suggest for right now is if you want to revisit the bylaw thing, then we should make that an agenda item for a future meeting. Um, and that way it's agendized properly and we come up with some suggestions uh, and revisit that and take that back to the board. Tonight, I think what Luke and staff are looking for primarily is, here's our, or his suggestion as to, you know, we want to get these presentations going. We do think that they're helpful and that obviously they're desired. Uh, 
are these areas what you want staff to focus on with these four presentations for the next four months that we're prepared to put together, or is there something different, specific? It doesn't have to be these areas. It's really, this is, we're doing this for the commission. So it's whatever the commission thinks is most helpful to the commission. And I also think if, if we, we could follow this list and just among ourselves, comment that we will make our best effort to review the site before the meeting, then there may be no need to change any amendment language because we're, we're kind of covering ourselves for that. And, and then, you know, so we do our informal on our own. I mean, I don't think we even try to get together to do it. I think it would just be individually. Mm -hmm. And then we come become, you know, then we come prepared for that presentation on that given month. Yeah, uh, well, and I would go so as far to say, too, is if you were to, re you know, I don't speak for Luger, certainly make a schedule, but I think if you were to reach out to Luger myself and say, hey, well, I'm planning on being out there at this time, any chance you can join us, then if our schedule allows, we'll join, you know, uh, if that's helpful or desired. And if you'd rather do it on your own, do it on your own and come back. But uh, we would make ourselves available the best that we could, um, recognizing other commitments and everything. Too, so. Well, I also don't know. That I, I, I don't. I guess I'm not a, a knowledge enough to know that if two of us and Luke are out there, is that? I don't think we can do that. At this point in the game, that would constitute a quorum. You can't do that. So, right. If we had a fourth commissioner, the two of you could do it. Right. Um, but uh, you know, and again, on these, I don't see them taking too long. It's good for us to get out with with each of you too. So, you know, I'll do my best to make myself available. Uh, Blue's always proven to do his best to make himself available. Uh, just recognizing that sometimes we might not be able to be available. It just seems more of a burden to say, you know, three different calls you get that I'll be there on Tuesday. I'll be there Wednesday afternoon. I'm yeah, be I, understand. More well, I appreciate that, but, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. But if we can't make it happen, we can't. Okay. And, you know, we just have to not take that personally, please. Well, in my opinion, the, the list is looks fine to me. I see no issue with that order. Okay. And uh, I can certainly take a drive out to Creekside sometime in the next, after a few weeks. And me too. I don't know what I want to say about it when we get to the meeting. And, and then I'll, I think we'll meet the, meet the requirements of the bylaws. And, Okay, perfect. So basically the direction we're taking from the commission is the suggestion from Luke here, we're going to roll with that and for the next four months, uh, um, unforeseen circumstances notwithstanding, we'll deliver these four presentations. And then we'll each make do our best to visit the site beforehand and yeah, and this timing works. Don't like what we're doing, then you can let us know. No, I, <laughs> my thought is I like <laughs> John brought up having the presentation. The fact that these are February, March, April, and May gives plenty of leeway <clears throat> for the bylaws saying summer months. Summer doesn't start till. Oh, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I think the spirit of that is so, and no, 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 but right. it, it gives plenty of time if there were things that needed to be done, mm -hmm. that issues came up, and we, we, then we could deal with them in the summer months on a, on a specific, yeah. specific basis. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you. I don't know, Luke, sorry, I feel like I just took that. <laughs> oh, no, it's all good. I, um, no, that, that's helpful. And, to your point, this is for the commission to kind of keep up on what's going on with our facilities, so it's, it's helpful. You know, if I could just add one more thing to that, um, and I, I'm pretty sure I had mentioned this in the past, it's, it's hard for us to know, like, where your priorities are at. Like, I don't, you know, it's, I felt like when we were doing the site visits, we would get bogged down in the, in the minutia and the details that it's probably like 
not on your radar because it's not important in the big picture of things. And so that's another reason why I liked your presentation was that you, you know the full scope of the priorities and what's on your plate and what's realistic and what's not. So then you can present the issues that really we should be talking about instead of, uh, I don't know, just some random sidewalk issue or something that's like, okay, it's been like that for 10 years, it's probably going to be like that for another 10 years, and nobody complains about it, so let's we'll stop talking about it. You know, um, so th that's another reason I like those presentations, so I just wanted to add that. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that, yeah, that's, um, and, it, and on the staff side, it, the reason I kept the the order of the same is just add this in is just or the, the going facility by facility is um, it is helpful for us as a staff when we get pretty blind to some of the stuff and get into the routine. It's nice to look back like okay, what's what does this look like? What's the big picture? What are the things? It's it's kind of a, a helpful exercise for me and for the staff to kind of go through these facilities, knowing that they're going to be scrutinized or knowing that I'm going to be presenting on it, and taking some photos. So it's uh, the kind of I thought like this goes both ways. It's yeah. helpful on, on that too. Anything else on item number five? Yeah. Um, just, this is just one side thought, and I'm not sure how we do this, but um, if there's an interest in bringing in more of the public to enrich the discussions around our facilities, um, I don't know if we post on social media when we're going to have certain agendas, but folks who live out in my Creekside Park, for example, if they saw that and they might be interested in that come to a particular meeting if they know there's going to be a presentation and discussion mm -hmm. around Creekside Park. You might get a bunch of residents from the Lucas Valley and might come out for that particular one or that type of thing. So if, when they're scheduled in advance and we know what they're going to be, if there's an interest in putting that out, um, it could be a way to bring more people to the instant meeting if that's something that's of interest. Yeah, I can definitely uh, consider, you know, Stephen posting announcements, uh, for especially for these types of things where there are these presentations on next door or something like I do for the board meetings. I will say too, um, every Park and Rec Commission agenda gets sent to the Lucas Valley Estates Homeowners Association um, email. So they get a copy of everything and they have joined us. At, uh, their president, the gentleman named Bruce Carmendale, has joined us before for uh, walkthroughs out there. Uh, and actually, they just have kind of recently got re-engaged as a HOA. Um, so sure, yeah, I don't disagree with you. Uh, it'd be nice to have other people come in and understand. Yeah, and, uh, work on your plate. It was yeah. just a thought. It, it's, that's not much more important. <laughs> you know, I just put something out there that says, hey, you know, PNR commission meeting, uh, please note at this meeting, we'll actually staff will give a presentation to the commission on uh, uh, work priorities for the Marinwood Park, you know, or the pool, or whatever the case is. So that's not that hard for me. Be nice to, get to, so that, to that point, um, it might be nice. I don't have a sense of what kind of emails or phone calls you guys get from the public. If, like, Creekside has an issue and you've got some complaints about something, I'd be kind of curious to know, like, in that presentation, like, this is what we're hearing from the public on this sure. site. Maybe yeah. you're not hearing anything, but if you are hearing something, curious to know what that is. Yeah, no, I, that's, um, I think that's something that was on my radar going into the last presentation as well. Like what are the, the kind of recurring questions right. or things that are yeah. kind of coming through up on the pike, down the pike. Um, so yeah, I'll keep that, okay. I'll keep that in mind. Keep your concerns in mind there too on the Creekside. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I was just out of Creekside with my kids last week and I'm like, hey Luke, you should know, there's a couple things I've noticed out there. <laughs> uh -oh. Which is perfect timing because we're going into that one the next month. So. My kids love that part because they always have it to themselves. Okay. Yeah, so they just they run around and they love it there. Okay, uh, we'll move on. Uh, item number six, uh, Luke, your Recreation and Parks Maintenance Activity Report. Thank you, John. Uh, just a few things to highlight from the last couple months since we haven't, and I wasn't at the November meeting, uh, so I haven't seen you guys officially, I think, since October. Um, but just the highlights of the last couple months, which is Winterfest, um, our, our big uh, wintertime event in December was, was a really great success. Um, one of the best turnouts we've had since I've been here. Um, and it was really fun. We had a lot of people in the community, a lot of new faces it seemed like uh, turned out of that event. So that was a really um, just a great, a great time and a great time to engage with a lot of our 
college uh, staff that were coming home on break and um, just, a, just a really fun time. And we also ran a winter break camp uh, for the two weeks the school was off and another time when we have a lot of our um, high school and college uh, counselors come in and run that and Robin and uh, Stephanie ran some trainings and had some meetings with, uh, with staff that were in town uh, those couple weeks which was, which was really fun to see everybody again and make plans for the summer. And, so um, that winter break was just a, a really fun time to sort of a, a preview of what's to come for, for our next summer. Um, and then right now, everything's kind of back in full swing at the community center as far as our classes, our after school program, preschool, uh, is we're pretty much busy every day. Um, most of our programs have resumed uh, after the, the break and it's been pretty um, just hustling and bustling. We're doing a lot of prep for summer, the new Marinwood Review will be in print. Uh, it's already up on the website, uh, our catalog of all of our spring and summer programs, and it will be in print, I believe within the next week, I think, is when we're expecting to um, to have that mailed out. And that reaches uh, 19,000 homes and businesses. Uh, that sound right? That sounds, that sounds a lot. That sounds high, 1,900? That sounds a lot. I'll have to, I'll have to no, <clears throat> well, it goes to all the surrounding areas. It's not in Marino, it only it reaches uh, all the surrounding cities and communities, and it's, it's our it's, it's our top top marketing tool for all of our summer programs. So that's uh, coming out uh, probably yeah in the next week or two. And uh, Carolyn Solvin did the lion's share of uh, putting that all together and uh, assembling that, and it's I'm really happy with it. So I'm looking forward to. It, to showing up on everyone's doorsteps or mailboxes, I guess. Yeah, I just wanted to mention, um, last summer, local families had a hard time getting into camp. It was a little spot to in the class. So, it was just an interesting piece. Even um, on the resident, the resident only part, huh? The difficulty is this Mont Marin and Terra Linda folks can't get in on that. That's the resident is only for right. this Marinwood area, but we share an elementary school, so the families are kind of, we have, there's lots of families who go to elementary school in the, in the, in the Lucas Valley School District. Right. All, it's all kind of one community, and so it yeah, was just an interesting thing. It was all full, and there were kids from other towns, and there was a little bit less of that great kind of community vibe for Marinwood. Yeah, well, so, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, I'm just, so that's, I mean, the, uh, the popularity of the campus has definitely been increasing year after year for the last decade, um, and, and we uh, and we only have increased the the window in which, um, you know, again, residents, to your point, that doesn't include all of the surrounding areas, but um, short of, of creating a new tier of, of sub-resident, you know, it's a, the resident uh, is, is kind of the way we can differentiate, you know, either you're in our district and um, contributing to our programs uh, or you're outside and so we've also allowed for another way in you know if, if you join join the pool which is more attractive to the local communities that are residents than people coming from like San Francisco or, or whatever um, so it, it's always a challenge um, to to it's just kind of first come first served so um, try to get the word out plenty of times so that people know registration opens on this date things fill up quickly these are the most impacted age groups and um, just making sure people are organized with their schedules and they're prepared to come in and, and know what they want to sign up for. Um, the first wave of, uh, of, of people to sign up, you know, get, get what they want, and it's, um, it's more people that uh, wait a little too long. We just try to just let people know that it's um, very competitive and give as much notice as we can. But it's, yeah, it's just hard, it's hard, you know. Um, this might be more of a future agenda item, so just put it out there and we can park it. You might want to look at pricing for non-resident rates. If there's so much demand, it's the Marinwood camps are incredibly inexpensive compared to a lot of other camps. Like the ones that I'm looking at for my kids that are local in the area, and they go up to four hundred dollars a week, and I think we're at like one hundred eighty-eight. So that may be also what's driving some of the demand. Is some of the pricing. Now these are for you know some other kind of different Waldorfies. You no know, specialty right. like tight camps, but this is a pretty awesome situation too. So you know, maybe mm -hmm. just a thought to just put it out there because there's a there's a, a lot of demand that we're in. I think particularly for the marine camps. Um, yeah, absolutely. And it's something we do. You know, take that into consideration when we, when we look at what we're doing with fees each each uh, yeah. each season. But um, yeah, that's definitely come up before. Can I touch before you move on with the catalog? Uh, 
and I think I can say it out loud now because it's on the web. If you don't normally look at it, take a look at it this time when it comes out. Uh, Carolyn and the staff and Robin and Luke, uh, this is our 60th year as a CSP. And they put together a whole like picture vignette uh, of, of historical photos from. It's really, it's really neat to look at. I mean, there and it covers all of the district. You know, from like the first fire engine that we got to old pictures from you know way back in the day to more modern. It's it's a neat pictorial. All that. It covers I don't know six, seven, eight pages. I feel like yeah, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe uh, yeah. Uh, of a lot of our history and some neat. Uh, history of the development of Marin Wood and kind of the role of CSD. So I encourage you to, when you get it in the mail, to take a look at it because it's really neat. They did, a, cool. they did a remarkable job finding just old photographs and old uh, stories and things along those lines. So it, uh, please take a look. That's cool. Nice yeah. job. Yeah, I know. I have to thank uh, our, our former um, senior administrator, Paula Collins, who kept very good archives that we were that left to us to, to pour through. Um, after she retired, so it was really fun reading these old Marin Wood reviews from the 80s and stuff. It was just as a kick. But, um, yeah. it's, a, it's a neat feature. I, I, I hope people enjoy it when it comes out, and I certainly want to draw some attention to it. And Carolyn wouldn't let me share it or say anything about it because she wanted it to be kind of a surprise that it was going out. But now that it's on the website, I feel like yeah, I, say, I feel like I can say something right? about it. About it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a neat neat feature that we normally don't do in the review, which is more of just, here's classes and camps, so it's, it's neat. That's great. Um, I, before, if you have anything else about the recreation side of the report, um, let me know. I, was, I, can, I can talk about the sort of parks maintenance. Well, I guess I do, would just make the comment that in regard to what Ann said about the issue of kids in the school district that are outside the actual Geographic mm -hmm. or Inwood. I mean, you know, I haven't had to worry about camps for almost 30 years now. So. <laughs> but if, if there was like a some way to build in an option that, you know, this is for residents on this these dates, and then there's a, like a, a two day window of non residents within the school district or something that would give them maybe a, a, a a step ahead or something that would help kind of I don't know if that's an option to kind of there, that we have issue. one limitation with that because we were we were looking at sort of our options with our um, just with the, the tiered system and, and just seeing what are the other things we could do our registration system um, it has basically two um, registration windows uh, so you can differentiate resident, non-resident. There's not a third tier that we can add in at this time. We've, we've put a request in for them to add in more options in case we want to do something about the future. But uh, as of right now, and that, you know, I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but um, we were not able to make another designation. And, and so people could, we could say we won't take your registration in person, but for most of our registration comes online. And that would, um, it, it, there wasn't a way to do that, just, just so you know. So we're all, we have some limitations with the technology at the mm -hmm. moment, but in the future that, that may change. Uh, I would be curious as to how you would know, because when the kids were going to Mary Silvera, a lot of kids from Terra Linda went to Mary Silvera. They, I don't know how they drew lines anywhere, but how would you ever know that these people went to the school in the school right what kind of documents yeah, yeah I mean, you know, you report <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. like yeah, people right. are going to come out of the woodwork for that second tier well and yeah. students who live on out smith ranch road go to mary silvera students who live yeah, in right. the Charlie immediate bob marin yeah. Yeah. go to uh, lucas, lucas valley yeah. elementary it's it's, it's it is, yeah and to your point who knows just that you know they could go to St. Patrick's. I mean, you know, we don't know just because you live in that area. You don't know so that they actually go to that school. I, that, yeah, I agree. Unless it's all encompassing the Dixies. I mean, the um, the Miller Creek school. Jesus or Zitcho's or something like that, but that's, that's pretty complex. Yeah, and our, our uh, mm -hmm. registration software uh, does not have um, a lot of, uh, doesn't handle a lot of complexity like that at, at this time. It, it, it would be 
doing just resident and non-resident has been pretty tr tricky just to make that work, uh, to be honest, in the, in the years. So, um, yeah, but something, you know, that we've been looking to in the future. Okay, I think we're good with the okay, recreation then. We'll move to parks. Uh, okay, yeah, for the, the last couple months, uh, we have been, the staff's been um, keeping busy and one, just checking the creek, we were removing some, some possible dam hazards from the creek, uh, planted some hedges in the mini park, done some fence extension uh, in the main park with the rail fence, and partly, I include all the details in here, but um, it, the, the rail fence that goes along um, the, the main park from the playground towards the, the far field, um, part of the impetus for that is that there's some erosion going on um, and the, the bank over there and the drop-off is a little bit um, uh, sheer and, and it's not obvious that it's there so uh, we've got some signage that's going to be going up in some of the spots that are really steep. Um, I've got some temporary signs where we have some permanent ones that are showing up soon. But that was just to be a visual barrier and just make sure that kids weren't just like running, chasing a ball, you know, right over the edge where it used to be a little bit more of a gradual, you could actually like walk down. Um, it's, it's a pretty sheer drop in some of the areas. So uh, that's, that's part of the impetus for that and we're trying to keep the areas safe. Um, we did bring uh, some, some erosion specialists out to kind of give some recommendations on, on you know, that, that area. We'll be looking at some things in the spring to um, what we can do to sort of slow what, what the creek's been doing to the, um, to the area. But I've lost a little bit of real estate the last you know, 10 years there. So, um, uh, so um, that's one thing that the staff's are working on. Right now we're getting the pool ready. Uh, the Water Devils the swim team will start practicing on March 2nd. And um, we're just getting things getting clean and balanced and, and heated, treated, uh, got some repairs going down, uh, going down the pool the next uh, month with the plaster and doing a couple patch jobs and, and doing some deck repair and uh, working on um, doing some minor fixes to the water slide, just getting everything kind of up and running in time for the pool. Uh, so the water devil start on March 2nd and then the, the pool will be open to the public um, on Monday, March 30th. So that's all um, coming up. And we're in, in good shape for to be ready to go for that. Um, Look, uh, when it says you uh, scrubbed and backed up vacuum the pool shed off. So that's just did you did you drain? No, just uh, we have a, a a vacuum that we you know pool pool vacuum we use right. to, to yeah. vacuum. Scrubbing just gets some of the algae off while we uh, all things were pretty dormant for the winter. Um, so so you didn't change water. We did not drain the pool. No. How how often do you do that? Uh, we do not fully drain the pool ever, um, unless we're going to do replastering, it's 220,000 gallons, so that's a pretty expensive endeavor. Um, we do backwash uh, the pool, you know, on a regular basis, and um, we end up, you know, theoretically, with that schedule, changing out the, the pool water you know, each season, um, it gets changed up through our backwashing schedule, but not all at once, obviously. Able to maintain a TDS level at a uh, actually, the pool's uh, terrific right now. Uh, we have, uh, yeah, it's 15 degrees. <laughs> yes. uh, but uh, no, I mean, in terms of the, yeah, in terms of the, the balance and the, and the tea, yeah, everything's, um, you know, we we got things are things looking pretty good when uh, after the, the winter. But yeah, things are should be uh, in prime condition when the when the swimmers uh, jump in that first day. All right. The sanitary district asks too that we give them some heads up if we're ever going to drain the pool. Plus that much water feeders. Well, that much chlorinated water going down, they want to know that's getting ready to come because they uh, will make some adjustments to their systems preparing for it. Right. Uh, yeah, any other questions on the, on the parks maintenance report? Um, for the, the, the mini park for the hedge repairs, so the plantings are in, which is great. Yes, they're, uh, they're, they're uh, going to take a little while to, to grow fully in, so it's a little fenced off over there, and um, okay. so we'll just kind of keep an eye on it and hopefully it will trample it. How long do you hope it will be when you remove the fences? Uh, I'm not totally sure. Uh, I, with the, they got a little smaller than, than um, what I was hoping, just with what they were able to pick up. but. Uh, I think um, we'll be able to take the fence down probably in, in the next month. 
um, just if it's establishing and, and you know seems like it's not going to get kicked over or something. It's, this is the, the gaps that were yes, brought up. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah, I noticed the fencing was up. Is the irrigation functioning in that? It location? is. Yeah. 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 Do you have a sense of like why it was? I mean, it was just like a desire to go to the creek. And no, I, that was an area that uh, I think had gotten damaged. Whether like kids were playing and fell into it or something, it wasn't a planned. Um, it wasn't a planned walk through. It was just that something had, it, that section of the hedges had just gotten right. got, had died, yeah. and, it, and it sort of just got it just turned into a, right. a, a path over over time. Right. It's been there since I worked here. Right. right. So. Right. Well, I. Uh, was down at the mini park the other day with one of my kids as well and saw people playing in the creek right I mean, you know, people just could go right through there, you know, and they use that as a yeah. their own little personal pathway to walk down, even though we use it as a buffer zone to say, hey, stay within this, uh, there's people right down there in the creek. They were right. using it even though the fence was up? No, not with the fence, but that's, they were still down there is my point. Just now that we've got a fence and we're trying, yeah, yeah exactly, like so going around it yeah. and, and going down. So now that we've got the fence and hopefully we'll be able to fill that back yeah. in, that will discourage yeah. right. the shortcuts, uh, shortcuts yeah. you know, social yeah. short, shortcuts, uh, for lack of a better term, being Have developed. You, has anyone thought of integrating a different type of hedge, like I've actually seen the middle school kids right. use those holes in the hedge. Uh, or like, black bear. Well, yeah. they go back there and then they come out onto the playground, and yeah. I've also found seen back there empty alcohol bottles. <sighs> so I think there's kids maybe. You know, using it for that reason, so it's kind of funny. Uh, the thorns there. Right. <laughs> well, on the note of the mini park too, I did notice, and I've noticed, um, there's two separate lights that light up the mini park. They're actually part of our whole street light system. Um, the one closest to the street is out, and it has been for a little while. So I've actually contacted uh, DC Electric, who has the maintenance contract for all of our street lights. Um, they were sending somebody out. I don't know what the prognosis of that is because when I drove by just the other night, it still wasn't coming on at night. Uh, but it's being so. If you've seen, if you've noticed that, it is being addressed and uh, hopefully should be fixed shortly because we just upgraded those lights a couple of years ago from what were some very dim, older style lights to some much brighter LED lights in in light of uh, all the vandalism and things that were happening there for, for a period of time. Anything else on uh, recreation and park maintenance? All right, we're moving on to item number seven, uh, designation of commission chair and vice chair for 2020. Um, well, I'd love to hear what it says in there. To be just very clear, the chair basically comes down to uh, either John Campo or John Toon because technically Ann hasn't been here for a uh, year yet, but that's not to stop Ann from being the vice chair. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, as always, I think as staff, we try to make this as, as easy as possible on the chairperson. I think uh, uh, you can be as involved or as little. I try to send out the agenda as early in the week before the meeting as I can get it to you to, to you know, any adjustments, any additions, any things, and then here's items, you know, give, usually if I have items of note that are coming up, I'll shoot that to uh, John Toon as well, so yeah, I don't, I don't, I hope it's not a, a large commitment uh, outside of chairing the meetings, which on some occasions can be an incredibly large commitment, but uh, it's a different story. And I'm afraid also with just three commissioners, the vice chair is almost a moot point because if the chair isn't here, then we don't make That's sure. Of so <laughs> that's a good point. But I hold out hope that we get more commissioners. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. So. So we're to discuss this now. To yes. This? Yep. Yeah. Well, I would. Uh, you want to take over? Um, you welcome. Yeah. <laughs> to you to continue. Because <laughs> you're just finding your groove now. You've got it down so well. I'm happy to be the vice chair. I still bring my cheat sheet. I'll probably always bring my cheat sheet. 
That's follow the right order. Happy to be your wingman. Um, I, 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 I can deal with that, I guess. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's have a motion for it. So the, I make a motion to approve John Tinn as the chair of the commission. Second. Are we going to also include you as vice chair? Sure. Okay. I make a motion to um, include John Campo as vice chair of the commission. I take care of it all in one eye. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Okay. Uh, I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, Commission item of interest request for a future agenda item. You know, in the um, in the minutes, there was some. I thought there was a discussion about really giving an update on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I, I by the time I put that this up. together, it was a little late, and oh. I felt bad even asking you if you wanted to put that oh. together because I thought that I wasn't giving. <coughs> uh, but I didn't see that, and I did think about you, and I thought, well, let's see if we can get it on another one. Okay, so next month I can do a presentation. That would be yeah. awesome. But I can give you a brief you know, verbal update now, where it's at, if you want. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, the project's going really well. The winter's been very cooperative, where we got a, a good amount of rain early on, and that kind of provided us with the appropriate moisture levels that we needed in the soil. Because typically we build trails in the summertime and we have somebody out there with a hose just pouring thousands of gallons of water out and we don't have to do that right now. Is that why you have the water tanks? Well, we have the water tanks, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah because when we build trails in the dry conditions, right. they have to constantly be watered. Right. Well, yeah. I noticed too that when you, the decommission of the Pontu yeah. fire road, was so <laughs> it was so thick of dust. Dust. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. It really made it hard it walking. Was, it was trying hard. to get to the bottom. In Queenstone too. Was yeah. really hard. Oh yeah. Dust <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. But at least it was firm. Yeah. And without all the ruts that used to be there. Right. Right. Yeah. So they, it, we constantly have to water, and so. We've never done this before. We've never built. We designed this project so we could build in the winter because it's so big. It's you know two years to complete it, and now that the guys are experiencing this, they never want to build trails in the summer again because it's amazing how it's perfect. Um, but not every winter is going to be like that. If we had a winter like we had, what was it, a couple of years ago, um, it would have been just a disaster. Um, and hopefully that doesn't happen still. So, um, so this has been very fortunate for us. Um, has been curious. Has anybody been out there to uh, hike it or check it out? Well, I haven't been up there in the last month. Or so. <coughs> I mean, I started going up when I. You guys started the project in June, I think. Yeah. And so I've been up there in se September, October, because I was trying to find. So I found where you started off of Queenstone, just below, just above Ponte, right? And then I followed it down, come to an abrupt end, have to backtrack, yeah. go back. So a lot of those and gaps are now new trail. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So I hiked it Sunday, and I, if you're interested in checking it out, um, the easiest thing to do is hike up Curlew Fire Road which is on the Novato side, uh, off of Elevator de Prado. And it's a steep fire road, I'll warn you, but it's not that long. And, you know, it's probably about a 10 minute hike to the top of that fire road, and that interfaces with Ponte. And so if you were standing there and look uphill, that part of the road has been decommissioned. And if you just turn to the left and walk 50 feet, the trail now connects there. It didn't last week. But now it does. So, and then from there, you could hike pretty much all the way on that trail to the bridge. There's a couple of gaps that haven't been completed, right. um, but it's all been mostly rough cut. Um, some sections are further along than others. 
uh, as far as like, the finished work, but in some sections are pretty rough still. But you can really start to see the shape of it, and um, I mean, it's it's really amazing. It's a really like an amazing effort that our guys have put forward, and the technical skill and the amount of rock. There was I gotta get the number straight, but there was thousands of tons of rocks in at the top of. Maybe I did I show you guys a photo of one. Oh, because you have all the boulders on. Yeah, we had we had so much rock up there to build with, which. I mean, we're building a really durable trail. It's not a lot of trails that build with wood yeah. you know, for steps or retaining walls. This is all stone, so it's not, it's never going to rot, obviously. Um, so we have a volunteer event this Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. And it's the, I know there's going to be a lot of high school kids there, um, and some of the neighbors are going to come out. And I, I, we made up shirts, hopefully they're ready for the volunteers, t-shirts with the party on it. Um, and we probably will, well, that will be a three hour effort. And I'm just trying to think of the overall timeline. The goal is to have this done by the fall of this year. Wow. Um, wow. So that's, that's really quick. That's impressive. We'll see. We'll see well, how it goes. Two years. Yeah, we'll see how the weather holds up. The guys have got way more, they're, they're further along than they thought they would be at this point, which is great. So if you go up Curlew and then you look to the right where the old Pocky Fire yeah. Road was, all of that's been uh, kind of leveled out a little? Yeah, so that's, that's been a, a pretty much a full uh, decommission of the road. And we don't do that very often. Right. And we, it was a great opportunity to do it. So they actually take an excavator and you have a flat road and they'll grab that outside edge and put it here so at the end the road kind of matches the natural contour of the land and the reason they do that is they really want to we want to reduce the risk of landslides because the road is what catches the water as it cheats off the mountain catches on that road and then follows the road down and when roads and trails have the ability to channel a lot of water <coughs> That's what's going to cause mm -hmm. the slide. Well, not to mention there's some real steep cuts yeah. out of that road yeah. too. So when you when you remove that the ability for the water to follow the road, it just kind of sheets off and disperses on the slope. Um, that reduces the risk of landslide tremendously. How did they? I mean, you can cover this in your presentation. Maybe you and I can talk offline. Um, the area where we had those retaining walls built. I know, so those are there. still there. Of course, yeah. obviously. Yeah. I'm just curious how they maneuvered around them, you know, because you know, to your point, they don't yeah. have the ability to do what they wanted to do in those sections. We we have, um, we're really lucky. We have really skilled operators. Like the, the what they're doing up there, I feel fairly confident, like it's going to be a cover of a mountain biking magazine or something. I mean, it's like, it's pretty special. There's, I've talked to a lot of people that have lived and you know, ridden and hiked all the trails around here, and it's like they've seen that, and they're saying there's nothing like that in Oregon. Not like the contiguous, you know, almost four miles that it's going to be. So it's it's really neat. Yeah. We're lucky to have it right here in our neighborhood. Well, we're so lucky to have you champion it. Well, yeah, that's awesome. So it's it's just a nice uh, synergy of you yeah. know things that came together. So well, you, um, you put a lot of time and work in there. So it's it's going well. Um, Trying to think of other details to share. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll bring a lot of photos next time because I think that'll do more justice to show some pictures. Yeah, well, if you and I can connect, I'll go ahead and plan on adding this to the agenda for yeah. next month. Yeah. And Luke's going to be giving his presentation anyway, so we'll have a projector oh, okay, and, and a laptop yeah. Yeah. ready to go. If you yeah. can just put some on the phone right. yep. and bring it with. Yep, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Any other future agenda items? I think we're good. I would, I'm not a commissioner on an item of interest, but I would just, as I mentioned yesterday, and thank you to John Campo and Diane and Shawson who showed up. Uh, obviously, I sent out the email. Uh, the Planning Commission approved the park maintenance design uh, review process on uh, 6 0 unanimous vote, which was nice. It does have the ability to be appealed. Um, if it gets appealed, it goes to the County Board of Supervisors. The appeal deadline is February 6th. Um, with that said, even if it gets appealed, you're talking about the County Board of Supervisors potentially even considering overturning 
a unanimous decision by the planning commission that followed a recommendation by the planning staff for the planning commission to approve it that followed the unanimous approval of an independently publicly elected board of directors of ours approving this project and then the county board of supervisors weighing in for a maintenance facility project it would shock me if they came back and did anything other than say yeah, we're not overturning it. Has anybody expressed interest in your appeal? Um, uh, formally, I don't know. Um, given the level of uh, opposition expressed by a small group of people, it wouldn't surprise me. It's certainly their right to appeal it. It will cost, there's a $1,400 fee that is associated with filing uh, a formal appeal on it. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, there's no mechanism for waiting or even reducing these fees, so they would have to come up with $1,400. And again, I just think after all of the steps that this has gone through, and then finalizing with the 6-0 vote of the Planning Commission, if the Board of Supervisors is seriously going to consider overturning all of that, uh, I think we'd have a, a very large story on our hands, and I just I don't see them going there. I mean, I would, uh, if it happens, obviously, I will plan on attending the Board of Supervisors meeting, and I would assume that and we'll learn more of the directors we want to attend as well. Maybe gets to that point. But I feel pretty confident that everything that has happened to get it to this point that uh, I just don't see how they could possibly inter intervene and try to turn this over. Any other questions? But you never know. Yeah, I'm just curious <laughs> I have one. I'll get you one. I noticed that uh, in the planning commission, she, uh, uh, comment is we have close. a gavel and a little and a little right. round thing. Right, and they have a sheriff there too. Not the planning commission. Yeah, no, I don't think it's a good idea. It's more civil sergeant Yeller. No, I didn't see it. Not for the planning commission. Oh, I know that they just stop. Just stop talking. And I would have rather had just a gavel to bang. Oh, we could do like a little four hammer. Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> well, they had, had one, and oh, Justin had one. And I, 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 took, I, I took it away from Justin. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, uh, I, I, just, I just forgot to put it out one night, no. and uh, yeah. I never brought it back. All right, all right. Good to know. It got a lot of use. But oh, boy, did it. Good. Boy, did it. And no, it did not. I'm not looking good. But making more noise and chaos. Anyway, that was I just bring everybody up to speed. So uh, February sixth is the deadline for any appeals to get filed on that. So uh, if and when we can get through that process, then uh, Bill and I will uh, continue to move forward with the next steps, which goes into other levels of uh, construction drawing. Uh, we need to uh, uh, solicit. Uh, yeah, well, we need to solicit structural engineering, civil engineering, uh, landscape design engineering, and there's a lot of other steps we need to get into the building. But we want to move it as quick as possible. So that if there's any way to get this RFP and get everything put together, so we can actually start by the uh, end of the construction phase. So is the hope to have it built before next quarter? Um, I'm gonna. Ha I, I don't. That is a wonderful goal. I don't know if it's a realistic yeah. goal yet. I, I need to backwards engineer this yeah. and look at where we're at. Go back to all of the biological reports. Um, now that we know that we're good, ideally to move forward with all of this stuff. And just look at all of the timings of when we're allowed to do certain things and backwards engineer and say how much time do we, do we need uh, regulatory agency permits um, the regulatory no the regulatory agencies have not chimed in on any of the initial study or anything like that and this doesn't actually touch the creek bank right. uh, fish and wildlife um, and, you know will play good they might want to, they will be more concerned with the demolition and a lot less concern with the building of the new facility. Um, just because of how precarious it is on the creek banks and pulling it off and uh, the restoration work and everything else. But they did not, they had zero comments on any, you know, even comments along the lines of we need to be consulted. You know, so when we went through the initial study and uh, uh, mitigated neck deck, um, they had no comments whatsoever. But they reviewed it. Yeah, that's good. Yep. I'd also like to uh, thank you, Eric, for carrying that yeah. ball to the end zone. I mean, well, we're not home yet. Well, yeah, close yeah, close well, to the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I think the, I think the end zone was that uh, 
Planning Commission approval. approval. Yeah. It was a big, it was a big hurdle. So yeah. thank you. There's a yeah. lot of people working really hard. Yeah, but uh, you know, in the past, that would tend to have, you know, it's like it's such a headache. I just, you know, put it down and we'll address it again. We'll address it again. But you, you, know, you stuck with it and we got it there. Wow. I appreciate uh, well, that. Well, I think that's what, when, when we first started talking about this. I think somebody had presented that this was like talked about, but always just kicked down the road. Exactly. Nobody wanted to well, take the, it Well, the, the, the road, we we crashed through the dead end of that road yeah. many, many, yeah. many years ago. There, there was no choice. There's no alternative. Right. Um, what we have is just, it, it, it's no longer a feasible solution. Right? It, it, it cannot be put off any longer. The longer you put it off, the harder it's going to be down the line. I think that was the big lesson on this, is they should have really done something about this 20 years ago. You know, it's. Uh, it would have been a lot easier to push it through. And you know, the longer you wait, the more red tape you have to cut through, and the more expensive it's going to be, and everything else. So, uh, but I feel good. I feel proud of how we've done it. Everything's been very, in my opinion, very transparent, very open, very uh, by the book. I thought it T's crossed, <coughs> uh, and I appreciated we have a good showing of community support. I feel that went to the planning commission meeting yesterday, too. It is online, and already posted on the county website. Uh, we just Google Marine County Planning Commission agendas. Um, you can watch the video on the presentations if you want to. So it was good. Thank you. But hey, but thank you, John. I appreciate it. You're yeah. welcome. Um, nothing else. I'll seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all. Yeah, no, I'll just plan on you doing that.